Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today we've got another game showing off one of our Death World Cycle Warlords, it's Jane Czar. She's going to be coming out in Against the Great Enemy, that's War Pack 5 of that same cycle. But at the bottom of our screen, as our two players decide whether or not they want to keep their opening hands, we've got Epistolary Visual, uh, which is new as of Unforgiveness. Given. So this is going to be the first non-proxy instance of this Warlord on Octagon. Looks like both of our players have decided to keep their opening hands. This is going to be another match pitting Sam Mann playing as Jane Czar against uh, Eric Keelback. And uh, this time he's going to be playing as the Space Marines Warlord Visual. So in the first of this series of two games, we had uh, Jane Czar play against... Uh, Zarethur, whom she against whom she's rather advantaged. Her ability is uh, when your opponent targets a unit you control this planet with a triggered effect, cancel that effect limit once per round. Uh, it works great against things like uh, Vesual's Hunters, but it works a lot better against uh, a warlord like Zarethur that uses Zinch's Firestorm. But for today's game, planet number one is going to be Taurus, the unit count planet which rewards players with three resources or three cards. At planet number three, we've got a copy of Earthcast Technician played by Vesual, so that is going to allow Eric to potentially retrieve attachments like promotion. Uh, at planet number two, we've got a Wild Rider Squadron, which is going to be able to threaten planet number one or planet number three played by Sam. It's a 3-4 and it's winning him command. And uh, we've also got a copy of Bone Singer Choir played by Sam, so that's a limited keyword card that allowed him to play that Wild Rider Squadron for two. Note that Sam's got a copy of Gift of Isha in his hand. Hand, uh, to potentially recur that squadron. And uh, he's also got a copy of his signature event, Storm of Silence. So when a card effect, any card effect, targets a unit, you can cancel that effect for the cost of two, and if the targeted unit uh, if the targeted unit was a unit you control, you can ready your warlord. So best after Jane's are attacks, or uh, does something that requires her to exhaust, like nullify. Uh, White Blade here at planet number one. He is apparently quite allied with Tau. Indeed, he's a space marine tossing out a copy of Crute Gorilla. So three cost two three with the command icon, and after a battle begins, you gain a resource, which effectively makes it a one command icon two three four, the cost of two. But uh, you've got to invest a little bit up front for it. It's kind of akin to a carnivore pack. Visual is whenever you deep strike a card, you draw one card, so it adds a bit of a cantrip effect. Our Space Marine players got a host of different powerful combat tricks at his disposal. Primal Howl for additional cards, Crushing Blow for additional damage, Indomitable to prevent incoming effects, and then on the opposite end of the screen, we've got that Gift of Isha, the Nullify, and then that Storm of Silence effect. So currently there are no abilities for Sam to attempt to cancel. At planet number one, Sam naturally possessing initiative has got a 2-2 same Han kinsman. It's not going to be able to kill the crude gorilla by itself, so maybe Jane Czar is going to end up showing up at that planet, or the Wild Rider Squadron is going to be able to finish the fight uh, that the same Han kinsman is going to be able to start. But some of that depends on, like, if Sam were to send his warlord to planet number one, and then Epistolary Vesual didn't show up. I guess we'll just kind of have to see what happens, but Vesual does show up to back up the Crute Gorilla, so it's going to be a 2-3 versus a 2-2. Jane Czar instead goes to planet number 4, where there's a Bealtan Guardians, two command icons for one, opposite a copy of Rogue Trader, which has a plus one resource bonus, but it had a promotion, so it was going to be a total of three command icons. Looks like it's going to be two cards, two resources for Sam, one card, three resources for Eric. Something I like most about these players is that, play, as that they play at a rather rapid clip, uh, and so long as I cannot stumble over over my words, uh, it's always nice um, to get these fun little games in quickly. Uh, so, Crute Gorilla, first of all, Eric gains a resource, and then it's going to be swinging for two. It's likely going to be able to kill off the same Han Kinsman here, unless Sam retreats. Looks like we see a copy of Storm of Silence discarded, so it's going to be able to survive. And now, uh, let's say if um, Eric manages to win this planet, like, bear in mind that whomever wins this planet is going to have to... 
uh, they're going to have to, to be able to benefit from this battle ability, have fewer units than their opponents. So the same Han Kinsman, like, if Sam loses this planet, he can at least try to keep his opponent's unit count high, because the same Han Kinsman takes a swing for two, Epistolary Visual takes a couple of points of damage, White Blade sitting pretty at six resources has got enough for Indomitable, now the same Han Kinsman is going to be killed, Wild Rider Squadron is going to have an opportunity here to take a swing at Visual, and, uh, we may see Indomitable used to block that effect, because it would certainly suck to have your Warlord at 1 HP this early. That is indeed going to be the Indomitable right there. Uh, and Jane Czar is going to use Nullify to cancel that effect, but we see another copy of Indomitable, so that is... Uh, Pretty interesting there, so the attack is still negated, but that is going to be two cards and two resources used uh, to remove three points of damage, uh, so I suppose we'll have to see if that ended up being worth it, so Jane Czar is going to be exhausted, uh, and I suppose at present, Sam has got a copy of Fortell. For instance, if uh, Sam were to retreat from this planet, Visual would not be able to activate that ability. Well, I guess first of all, to use Fortell, you've got to exhaust your Warlord. So Jane Czar is currently exhausted. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to see what exactly happens here. The Kroot Hunter. So this this is where things get interesting. So a combat round came to an end. Everybody readies. Nobody decides to retreat. Kroot Hunters, or sorry, Kroot Gorilla deals two points of damage to Wild Rider Squadron. Wild Rider Squadron takes a swing at a Pistolary Visual. Uh, we see a two shield card discarded. So that means that uh, Visual's going to be at three hit points remaining. And this kind of sucks for Sam because here's what could happen. Wild Rider Squadron is going to die. If Sam uses Gift of Isha to return it to play, it's not quite going to be able to bloody Visual. So, it's going to return to play. It's going to be able to attack Visual. White Blade is going to have a one shield value card to discard. That means Visual is only going to end up taking two points of damage as opposed to being bloodied, so he takes two points of damage. If Visual decides to stay, well, I mean, regardless, Visual's still going to have initiative. If he decides to stay at that planet, he's going to risk being bloodied, so it looks like Visual is going to have to retreat, and uh, if Sam ends up having his Wild Rider Squadron kill this copy of Kroot Gorilla, then uh, that is going to be the battle lost by Eric, but uh, er no, neither player is going to be able to trigger Taurus here, so Visual ends up retreating, and he's only got one hit point remaining. Uh, none of our five planets thus far have been uh, iridial, I suppose. I'll just say that. None of them are the healing planets, so uh, Eric is kind of finding himself in deep shit already. The Crude Hunter takes a swing of two, and it deals two points of damage to the Wild Rider Squadron. The Wild Rider Squadron swings in return, and that is going to be a dead Crude Gorilla. Congratulations to Sam Man for winning the battle at planet number one. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to benefit from this planetary ability, but he is going to be able to add a red and a green icon to his victory display. Eric takes a moment to damn uh, the Eldar, and unfortunately, we've not seen any Deep Strike cards yet, uh, and he's not benefit from Epistolary Visual's ability. On the bloodied side, Visual still remains a 2-6, so he's a rather formidable foe indeed. The Bealtan Guardians took a swing, killed that rogue trader that would have been the end of the combat round, and an opportunity for them to retreat. Aatrox Prime fires at Eric. Eric discards a copy of Crushing Blow. Eric is now at zero cards in hand, and uh, he'd better hope to draw some absolute gold, otherwise it's looking like he is up shit creek without a space paddle. So in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, uh, there is not necessarily a whole lot of mercy when you're out of cards after the first turn and your warlord only has a single hit point. Sam says that took a lot of the both. It took a lot out of the both of them, so maybe they're uh, both going to have a bit of a bonding and romantic moment here together, but four resources, two cards for each of our players as we move into the bottom of the second round here. New planet number one is going to be Planum, the planet which affords a prospect of victor the opportunity to move a non-warlord unit to the planet of their choice. Planet number five is going to be Karnath, the planet which triggers the battle ability of any other planet in play. At planet number one, we've got a card put into reserve. It is 
is the Valkyrie Pattern Jump Pack. Uh, it attaches to an army unit you control, and that is going to give it flying. So unfortunately, my spectator ship, all I can see is that it's a card in reserve. You put every card into reserve uh, face down for one, and I believe the Valkyrie Pattern Assault Pack is going to be a zero cost deep strike card. So for the cost of zero, any army unit like this uh, Tactical Squad Cardenas, if it shows up at planet number one, yes, it's going to be a 1-3 flying unit, and it's going to be against a 1-5 uh, Fire Warrior Elite, which it may as well be a 1-3 with flying, because that's quite the body there. Again, Sam Mann, the champion of the Fire Warrior Elite, no command icons versus one command icon. When we see the Valkyrie Pattern Jump Pack, uh, Deep Strike, that's going to be a card drawn by Epistolary Visual, whom is going into uh, the command phase here without any cards, like uh, nothing in his hand. Sam has got a copy of Bonesinger Choir that he's not played. Uh, planet number four for both of our players, and that is rough. So Visual is going to have to retreat. He's not going to be able to contest uh, Sam at that planet. A 2-6 is going to be able to quite handily beat a 2-1. So what exactly are we going to be seeing? That is going to be uh, Command 1 on planets 1 and 2 for Eric. That's going to be a card and a, a couple of resources for him. And for Sam, Sam just gets a mere one card, one resource. But one of his cards is, or sorry, uh, yes, Sam got one card and one resource, and Whiteblade got one card, three resources, but one of uh, Eric's cards is Full Garrus, his three shield value card, which after you deep strike a card, uh, the attached Warlord unit gets plus one attack and plus one HP until the end of the phase. Um, Eric ends up drawing a card... And I'm not exact... Oh, yeah, so sorry. He deep-striked the Valkyrie Pattern Assault Pack. Uh, so that is adding a rogue trader to his hand. It's not going to be too tremendously useful. And here at planet number one, uh, we've got Tactical Squad Cardenas fighting this Fire Warrior Elite. Sam drew a copy of the Banshee Assault Squad, so after he were to cancel a card effect, he could put his signature army unit into play from his hand at whatever planet he would like. Uh, do note that here at this planet, that's going to be an opportunity for Eric to retreat straight away. And speaking of retreat, it looks like Eric decides to retreat with his tactical squad Cardenas, and this is going to be an opportunity for Sam to relocate one of his units. He's going to be moving his Fire Warrior Elite uh, to a planet, but what exactly is his destination going to be? This is going to be Sam with two green and one blue icon in his victory display. He's currently taking a moment to think about life, and uh, I suppose for Eric, he'd maybe best want to hold on to this for shields. Interestingly enough, Sam moves his Fire Warrior Elite uh, to our soon-to-be planet number one, his earliest possible victory condition. I suppose another possibility for Sam would have been to move the Bealtain Guardians to that planet number one, where he could have a couple command icons opposite a copy of Earthcast Technician. Epistolary Visual retreats from that planet, and what sucks about this is our soon-to-be planet number one. Uh, I guess first of all, Barless, Forced Ran Random card discard is going to be triggering, and that is Fulgaris, the signature attachment randomly discarded from Visual's hand. Rogue Trader is the only thing that uh, Eric still has at his disposal. So uh, let me see here. Uh, so we have got. Okay, so they're. Yeah, so they've figured out whatever issue they had going on. We're about to see another HQ phase, which is two cards and four resources for each of our players. Farron is going to be our last planet of the game. Planet number five, it is the route, a warlord planet. Planet number one is going to be a possible victory condition for Sam, man. Did Whiteblade draw what he needs to contest planet number one? He got a copy of Kroot Gorilla, a 2-3 with a command icon. He's also got a 1-1. One, one. He's going to have a 2-3 flying unit. And uh, we've also... Oh, well, you know what? I was thinking thinking uh, a 1-5 is going to be much more durable than a 1-3 flyer because uh, flying doesn't actually double your pool of HP. I was thinking about things uh, oddly there. Haven't been uh, having enough conquest on the brain, I suppose.
So let's see. Sam wisely decides to put out a copy of Rogue Trader to Planet Number Three. Uh, so Sam has got a lot of different interesting abilities here. Uh, so here at Planet Number One, we've got a copy of Warlock Destructor, a three-four with a command icon. We now see an Imperial Fists Devastators, which is presumably going to be played at Planet Number One. Note that Bone Singer Choir is an upgrade, not a location, and the Imperial Fists Devastators, if they show up at Planet Number One, they are not uh, at a blue planet. Regardless, so even if the Bone Singer Choir were to be a location, uh, that would not have been destroyed. But the Devastators are going to be a 4 3 at this planet, there will be a 2 3 at this planet, there will be a 1 1 at this planet, there will be a 1 1 flying unit at that planet, and there's also going to be a modified 2 1. And the instant that Visual takes a single point of damage, uh, he is going to be uh, basically jettisoned from that planet. So, in regard to what Sam Man has at his disposal, Fortel is only going to be worth it for shields. Um, we've got a copy of Star Cannon in Sam's HQ, but he doesn't have any vehicles to put that on. And uh, unfortunately, I guess Sam has kind of run out of combat units before he's run out of resources. So I'll be curious to see how combat is going to go with this planet. Uh, White Blade doesn't have any shield cards whatsoever. Sam, if both players send their warlords to planet number one, uh, that that means uh, Sam is going to have initiative. He could attack with his Warlock Destructor. If White Blade does not manage to draw any cards, then that's going to be the Imperial Fists Devastators killed, and then the Crute Gorilla and the Earthcast Technician are going to be able to attack, but the Fire Warrior Elite is going to be able to sponge up some of those attacks. Jane Zar isn't going to be able to cancel any kind of card effects, and therefore we're not going to be able to see the Banshee Assault Squad being put into play. Uh, but I almost kind of wish, like Sam has passed, I kind of wish for his sake he'd have played the Banshee Assault Squad at planet number one, just because it... Uh, it may have ended up making a big difference in regard to whether or not he's going to win the game. It's looking like, okay, so very interestingly, I guess, Visual is going to end up going to planet number three, so it looks as though he's hoping for cards. Jane Zar instead is going to end up going to planet number four. So it looks like Sam isn't necessarily going to try and win uh, on planet number one, but we'll just kind of have to see how things go. Looks like he's taking things easy. Uh, Sam ends up getting a total of two cards, two resources. He got another copy of his signature arm unit, and he also got a copy of his signature attachment, the Mask of Jane Czar, which is after an enemy unit at the same planet as the attached warlord uh, triggers an ability you deal a point of damage to that unit. That was definitely the downfall of Zarather in our previous game, which if you've not seen, I heartily recommend checking it out. And wouldn't you know it, no shield cards drawn for Eric. He got a copy of 8th Company Assault Squad, another deep strike unit with natural synergy, of course, with Vesual, and he also got a copy of the uh, Honored Librarian here. So the 8th Company Assault Squad is essentially you uh, put it in reserve for one, you deep strike it for two, and then you can ready a Space Marine unit at its planet, and if Vesual is hail, you can draw a card as well. So, uh, let's see, we have got the Fire Warrior Elite, interestingly enough, is going to swing and deal a point of damage to the Devastators, and the Devastators in return are going to be taking a swing at that Fire Warrior Elite. Sam is deciding whether or not he wants to use his signature attachment to save it. If only Sam knew that Vesual didn't have any shields available to him, what Sam could have done is, of course, swung with a Warlock Destructor, killed the Imperial Fist's Devastators, taken a hit of of two from the Crute Gorilla, cleared the Earthcast Technician, and he'd have been able to handily win the battle here. But Sam went ahead and discarded. Okay, uh, so interesting. Sam discarded that three shield value card to save his Fire Warrior Elite. The Warlock Destructor kills that Crute Gorilla, and it looks like Eric calls out the GG right there, but they're going to play it for the camera. If you've not noticed a theme, looks like Eric likes to call out GG early. He's a very realistic young sir. Uh, the Earthcast Technician takes a swing. Fire Warrior Elite takes a point of damage. We're going to already up at the end of the combat round. That's going to be the Warlock Destructor taking a swing, killing the Imperial Fists Devastators then the Earthcast Technician would have had an opportunity to attack for one, then the Fire Warrior Elite would have been able to kill it, but it looks like that is going to be the GG with a retreat right there, so congratulations to Sam Mann.
and uh, he has won the game. Looks like Sam captured the last planet, and Eric Keelback, out of all the, you know, hundred, couple hundred, yeah, probably couple hundred, three hundred games of Conquest he's played, I guess that is the first time uh, he has seen that message. So, congratulations to Sam Mann for winning a second game with Jane Czar, the upcoming fourth Eldar faction warlord, which is going to be making her debut in Pack 5 against the great enemy of uh, the Death World cycle. Well played to Eric Keelback. Looks like he's off to drink some bleach, as is so popular with the youth of today. So very well played by both of these players. Unfortunately, Vesual was not really able to deep strike much of anything. And uh, that ended up being a bit of a brutal game, even though we did not see either of these Banshee Assault Squads being dropped into play or the Star, uh, Star Cannon doing anything. So congratulations again to Sam. But thank you so much to Eric for being a proper sport and a good sir and allowing me the opportunity to proxy a couple of games here so viewers thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button subscribe to the channel share this content so more people are exposed to this competitive living card game get in touch with me on facebook on twitter and if you'd like i would be honored and deeply appreciative were you to make even a meager tiny contribution to my patreon you know help keep the hive tyrant alive so thank you as always and uh once again be sure to check back in again soon for much more conquest lcg content to come